Hey everybody, in this quick tutorial I'm going to be showing you a couple of quick tips to optimize the performance of your props in 3D Exchange and also when you import them into iClone. So currently what we have on the screen is a little uh, rooftop that I, uh, Italian rooftop that I imported from Google SketchUp. You can see it's called uh, Tegole Copie Penele. Uh, probably just butchered that name. But anyways, we have this pretty heavy looking um, rooftop. You can see it's a 599,000 uh, face count on the side. And uh, often when you import props in from SketchUp, you'll have tons and tons of different uh, mesh groups, you know, front and back and everything like that. You can see we have tons of stuff here. And um, the system might be lagging a little bit because it's, uh, you know, such a heavy um, prop. And it um, has a fairly significant draw call. And um, basically the system draws each individual uh, tile individually with individual mesh and individual materials. So that's why it's taking so long. Uh, one little time-saving tip that you can uh, do here is you can use the Merge Identical uh, feature in 3D Exchange 6. So once you select your uh, parent object, this uh, Copie Penele or whatever it is, uh, you can just go to the right-hand side in the Modify panel at the very top and select Merge Identical. And what that's going to do is that's going to merge all the meshes uh, with identical materials regardless of topology. So again, that's regardless of topology, whether or not you know the, the uh, shape of the mesh or anything like that. As long as they're using the same materials, it's going to merge them all. So it will work in most situations, but in some situations you may have uh, issues. But just keep that in mind. Uh, but with these tiles, you can see that you know there's just basically three sh separate shades of, uh, of tile here. And we don't need all these separate mesh groups. I mean, obviously, unless we wanted to take apart these tiles individually, um, this will probably take a while because what it's doing is it's searching through all these different mesh groups and we're uh, searching for which ones are identical so we can optimize the performance. And we're almost done. And when this is uh, finished uh, processing, we'll probably, we have uh, three separate mesh groups on the left-hand side here. You can see we just have a much more simplified hierarchy than we did before. So if I select, uh, you know, each one of these groups, you can see this first one right here. If I go down to materials, we have this, um, you know, Teglaga uh, 2.jpg. You can see the shade of diffuse uh, map right there. And then this one has Teglaga 3, uh, slightly different uh, shade of diffuse. And this one's uh, slightly different as well, Teglaga 1. So just three separate materials um, for this thing. And now you can see when we move around, it's a lot, a lot better, a lot smoother uh, as performance wise. And the face count remains the same, but we just have a more significant uh, increase in the performance. So I can just go ahead and import this into iClone by going up to the top left. We'll save it whatever that name is right there. We can call it, uh, you know, crazy, crazy roof for lack of a better name. And then just use all the default uh, terms right here. And we'll export that, in, that into iClone. So we'll go into uh, iClone here to our props custom folder. Did I call it crazy roof? There we go, crazy roof. And just uh, double click that and load it in. And you can see now we have this uh, rooftop in iClone and the performance is just fine. If I go ahead and uh, press play, now you can see that our uh, frame per second is about, uh, you know, high 50s or mid 50s, I guess, um, uh, between 50 and 60 anyways. Whereas before, if we had, you know, that really super high draw call, you'd be having a frames per second of like 25 or something really low like that. So um, obviously we're saving a lot of resources here. So I'm going to import in one more prop and I'm going to show you how you can, uh, you know, save some time on material assignment. Uh, let's go back into uh, 3D Exchange there and we'll load in a... Uh, file called the Eco Kitchen. You can find this in Google, Google SketchUp as well. We'll just uh, load this into our uh, 3D Exchange. We don't need to uh, save this currently st current stuff. So we get this nice, beautiful kitchen loaded up. And if I go into um, my uh, Explore window, you can see we have, uh, this is the kitchen that I've downloaded from uh, 3D Warehouse right here, this Eco Kitchen. So you can go ahead and download it yourself as well. Uh, pretty pretty good looking prop. So what I'm going to do here is do the same thing. I'm going to just select my parent object, Ego Kitchen 1, and go up to the very top and merge identical. And so that's going to do the same thing. It's not going to reduce the uh, mesh groups by as much because we have a lot of diff uh, separate uh, meshes here already. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and export this the way it is. I'm going to just go up to iClone and export. We'll call it Ego Kitchen 1. That's fine. So that's successfully exported. And then what I want to do is press Control Z and undo that merge identical, I'm going to export this version as well. So we'll do the same thing, export this, and we'll call this uh, Eco Kitchen uh, 2. And we'll just load that up, uh, export that to iClone rather. And then in iClone, we'll go ahead and load both those up. So we'll go down to our um, Eco Kitchen 1. So again, this is the uh, merged identical kitchen right here. And say, for example, I wanted to do some, uh, you know, a little bit of remodeling, change the uh, texture of my cabinetry. Uh, what I can do is just go to my uh, media, my materials, 
and uh, let's go to our substance power pack. We have some uh, wood materials here. I'll just you know take this um, whatever type of wood this is, Akko, and just uh, click and drag it onto my cabinet right there. And you can see that all the uh, cabinets will change. They'll look more like an IKEA style, um, you know, kitchen right here, a little bit brighter style. Um, so that's a really easy way to do that. Now let's go ahead and load in the Eco Kitchen One or Eco Kitchen Two rather, and see the difference. So let's go back to the uh, props here and find our Eco Kitchen Two. There we go. Click and drag this one in uh, right beside it. And then what I can do is I can apply uh, another material to this one as well. Let's take a different. Uh, different approach this time. Let's take a little bit of a different, uh, darker shade of, of wood from our substance packs. So I'm just going to select, uh, click and drag my material, or my substance rather, onto this cabinet right here. And you can see that now it only changes that one mesh. And if I want to change it or transfer this mesh to the, each individual uh, other cabinet, I need to go to my materials up here. I can use the picker tool or use the B hotkey and select this material right here. And you can see all the uh, substance channels uh, down there. And then what I want to do is uh, select my paint tool and then paint all the other um, different meshes as well. So it really depends on what you're going for. If you just want a really quick uh, remodel, like uh, if you're in the situation, the scenario where I, that I previously showed, you'd want to uh, merge identical, but it's not always correct. So it really depends on, you know, what, what scenario you're in, you're in if you want to go uh, more detailed into the individual uh, material assignment and stuff like that. So that's just another scenario where uh, Merge Identical can save you a bit of time. Now to finish off here, I'm going to show you that we can import in large props and also in new formats. So all of the newest formats, uh, FBX, OBJ, BVH, uh, SKP, we're going to, um, I'm going to show you the um, file that I'm going to download next, or that I've already downloaded, this uh, USS Reliant from uh, the epic ageless show Star Trek. You can see, uh, thanks to the Stuck 71 here, he's uh, made this available for us. And I've already downloaded this, uh, thankfully. So let's go to my downloads folder and we have this reliant2.skp. So I'm going to click and drag this into 3D exchange. Now you may get a not responding, um, window right here. Don't worry about that. It's going to, it's going to load up in just a sec. And the performance is a lot faster and optimized. You can see it just kind of pops up here. Now we have this uh, massive, really massive model. You can see it has a face count of 180,000, which isn't too bad but the object is just absolutely massive. And that loaded up in a matter of a few seconds, whereas the previous uh, 3 Exchange 5, it might have taken quite a while. So let's go ahead and just export this whole thing. We won't have to worry about all the uh, reset transforms and everything right now. Let's just call this Reliant 2. That name uh, is just fine. We'll go ahead and just press OK. And it'll just take a second to export into iClone. Let's go over to iClone here, our custom props, and let's find that uh, Elemental PQR. There you go, Reliant 2, so we can just double click on that and that'll load up in iClone. And as you can see, there is our absolutely massive um, Star Trek USS Reliant right here. And uh, we can use this in any of our spacefaring adventure productions with iClone. And again, if we go back to the uh, Google SketchUp page right here, whoops, there you go. Uh, you can see that uh, if we download it, we have, I downloaded the SketchUp 2015 model, which is the most recent model. So 3D Exchange 6 um, supports all of the latest uh, versions of all of these uh, industry standard formats. So just keep that in mind as well. So that's pretty much it for this quick tutorial, guys. I uh, just wanted to give you a couple of tips for optimization. Make sure you check out our other 3D Exchange 6 tutorials as well. And thanks for watching.